Well, one of the things you see a lot of in the news is how, uh, how energy and power is uh, uh, very expensive out there, which is true having grown up in Nome. I know that you can pay up to $10 a gallon for gas, oil, uh, and resources. When I was a kid, I hauled driftwood off the beach to make fires to save on energy. Well, <laughs> I can't say I thought about turbines when I was younger, but I did I did uh, play a lot with wind when I was a kid. We used to build uh, sail sleds, dog sleds, and sail them across the ice. But I... Well, the nice thing is it's really portable. You can pull with a four-wheeler. So summertime, you can move it to, say, a summer camp uh, easily. Uh, it's got a good clearance, so you could take it over some fairly rough stuff. You could probably upgrade the tires if you wanted to, Tundra tires if you wanted to. Um, I, I, I padded everything inside, so it's very stable, and I've taken it across some bumpy roads just to test that. Um, I was worried about batteries hopping up and down and shorting out, causing problems. But what I did is I padded the whole thing with styro styrofoam, and it also acts like an insulator in the winter, so it keeps those batteries nice and toasty. So it was a two purpose. It kept everything still and uh, it keeps them warm in the winter. So it's kind of winterized. So yeah, you could take these out to camp. Um, when you're done with camp at the end of the year, you could haul it back home and you could set up a house circuit with say lighting or even a small thousand watt heater or 2000 watt heater. Um, depends on the inverter you want to put in there. Um, well, we could adapt it for both hydro and, uh, and I actually have a hydro model that I'm laying out now, but I haven't built it yet. And uh, solar, it'll take solar directly as well. So because it's got a, uh, a DC battery bank, you can just charge it pretty much off of any source. Uh, so we, uh, we basically made a list of every part we would need to buy. Um, and there wasn't a lot to buy, believe it or not. You know, an 11 pound spool of wire for one turbine, um, a rectifier, convert the AC to DC, um, a miscellaneous nuts and bolts, lots of those for holding the parts together. And steel, we scavenged from the scrapyard, literally. I mean, uh, from the junkyards, uh, just pieces of quarter inch steel. And we welded the whole thing out of junk. I mean, literally. <laughs> In fact, the first ones, we didn't even have good circles. And the students made kind of oval looking, uh, they were kind of oval looking rotors. And so they weren't really round. So we kind of filled it in with uh, automotive resin to make them round, you know. <laughs> uh, but they provided the base for the magnets. So, uh, I mean, the first ones were really, really, you know, there were wood molds that we used to pour the resin. Um, you know, wood you can get from the junkyard, you know, you know plywood, you just need plywood. Uh, and, and it's not super pretty, but, you know, when we were all said and done, they were, they were both kicking out over 30 volts. So, so it, was, it, was, it was pretty good. But the parts, yeah, there, there was not a lot of parts. And even now, um, not a lot of, I almost never buy steel. It's either given to me or I, we go to the junkyard and we find scrap. And I build it out of that. And it's very stable. We actually, I actually had a structural engineer do an integrity check for me um, to compensate for cold and warm swings between winter and summer. And uh, the quarter inch was fine for the uh, smaller magnets. And we went to half inch or three eighths for uh, the bigger turbines. So uh, structurally, it would, take the, it would take the winter to cold. Well, to put it in perspective, we built two three kilowatt systems in one week in Nome. And so we did it in one week with um, eight students. So um, for a one kilowatt, which were our first ones we built, uh, I think I could easily, easily do that if I had the blades. The longest part of developing the original ones is we carved our own blades out of wood, literally hand carved them and hand plane them out of wood. There's an example of them downstairs I can show you after. But, um, so the students actually hand carved everything. And the, carving those blades took as long as putting everything else together and scrounging for parts. Um, the small one kilowatt systems, which is still plenty to charge one of these systems, um, weighs about 75 to 80 pounds, so it's not much at all. Um, 
uh, without the blades on it, it probably drops 20 of those. So you could probably lift it 50 pounds, maybe. The uh, turbine we're talking. Yeah, the whole generator, yeah. Now, the whole box system's yeah, going to yeah. weigh quite a bit more, yeah. Oh. You're, talking, you're talking about eight or 900 pounds, so. Because the batteries. Yeah, the batteries are very heavy, so they're 300 pounds on their own. With the three kilowatt up there now, that weighs 300 pounds. And then you got the weight of the frame and the steel, so. So, yeah, probably eight to 900 pounds. He's on anything. Um, if you're gonna go across tundra in the winter with the snow machine, you're definitely gonna need skis because that thing will sink right in the tundra. Um, but if you had skis, uh, and the nice thing about that axle is it's really fixed well. So you could easily pull off, pull off the tires on that thing and slap on a ski rack setup. Uh, I don't think it would be hard to swap that to skis at all. Uh, modifying your snow machine, it does have a ball hitch on it, but I know the ball hitch part can unbolt and you can probably put any end on there you wanted. So anything's adaptable. I don't have a design with that, but I don't see why it couldn't be done. <laughs> Considering we've thrown together an a energy producing machine from scrap, uh, changing out a ball hitch seems pretty, pretty easy to handle. <laughs>
And because this is a diode bank, it's not going to allow electricity to flow backwards into the system and overheat it. Um, so you could feed this right into a battery bank somewhere in your house, or you could, if you wanted to, you could stick it to a DC load. Uh, lights, DC light bulbs, uh, a DC electric heater, uh, whatever you want. And if you had enough juice coming out of these uh, phases on this, uh, there's three phases coming off here, as you can see, three wires. If you had enough coming on each one, you could probably power a bulb just on one phase. And in fact, we did that with the three Ks. They produced about 100 volts per phase. And when we spun it with just one of these, one of these phases, it actually lit the AC bulb. So. ABS Alaska has DC washers for fish camp, DC yep. uh, uh, refrigerators, DC freezers. Conceivably, you could stick that up in summer while people are cutting up fish, and uh, you might be able to power the freezer. You could, but um, DC stuff is expensive. And personally, I think it's cheaper to take the DC, put it in a battery bank, and then convert it back to AC with an inverter. Uh, that seems to be a cheaper way to go than to buy DC stuff. But okay. that's just my opinion. Uh, most stuff you purchase in America is an AC. Uh, is AC uh, it runs off of AC in any way. So, uh, Dane, what, you showed us the router itself for uh, generator. Generator, right? But uh, obviously, um, you need to have blades on there, and I'm wondering what you use. And I'm also wondering if, uh, in high winds, there's a problem with it spinning too fast, where you need to break or have some way of letting off some of the heat, so to speak. Sure. Um, First of all, to answer the blade question, uh, the very first time we built these turbines, my students handcrafted the blades out of wood. They took two by fours, glued them together, and then they hand planed them. And there's an example of right up here. Um, they did a pretty good job with aerodynamics. They modeled them after a plane wing, kind of. Um, they're a little bit thin at the tips, so they have a higher startup speed for sure, uh, about eight and a half to nine mile an hour wind to get them going. <coughs> But once they're going, they, um, they'll keep rotating until about uh, six miles an hour, five miles an hour. Um, they're good. They're they're really good, really good student project. Um, second question was about overspeeding. So what I have, what we built is called a furling tail system. Okay. So the whole point of this um, furling tail system is that the wind is hitting. Uh, the blades too hard, the tail actually will act as a fulcrum and bend when the wind's too high, when the wind hits about 60 miles an hour is what we've, we've rigged it at, and it'll turn the whole thing out of the wind, okay? Now, when the wind dies down, gravity pulls that tail back out and realigns it into the wind. So, it's a very cool setup. <laughs> Would you mind showing us the car? I will do that, yeah. Come Thank you. But I can show you a couple of features here first. We built in a kill switch here. So if we're working on anything inside, um, we can kill off the turbine power so it doesn't zap us. So that's a kill switch there. Um, we also have um, uh, connections here for the inverter. So this goes out, goes to the battery bank, which is just inside here. And then that splits off to the inverter and the instrumentation, which is all powered by this cart. And it is always on, so it's uh, it's always drawing a load off here. That's our kind of our test load. But all the circuits are independent. We also have a high amperage fuse in case we do ever overspeed and things start shorting out or the batteries touch each other. We have a 100 amp kill fuse in there. So if we start drawing 100 amps, it'll just shut everything off. So um, if you want to come around this side. Uh, this is a standard two inch trailer hitch, by the way. You can hook up to four-wheeler or truck, whatever, and it's got good clearance, so I've taken it out. It's also got a suspension that you could probably mount on uh, skis if you wanted to uh, and adapt it to different environments. Um, inside here, we have our battery bank here, and I, I'm up, I wonder if I can pull it open and see, no, <laughs> that darn lock, but our battery bank is here, okay? We wired it to secondary kill switches here. This is if we want to take the load off the batteries, we can shut these breakers off. Um, inside we have a separate switch for our inverter. 
And if you look in here, we, uh, I got dual, I got dual controllers for the battery bank, and I'm also adding a third one in, so I have uh, another circuit for um, uh, solar and hydro. So we could bring that in here. This this particular inverter is only a 1750 watt. It's a modified sign. You couldn't hook it to the grid because it's not grid compatible. Well, it it's not a clean true sine wave. So um, you want a true sine inverter if you're going to hook to the grid. But for you know using a cabin, running lights, microwave, whatever, it works just fine. Um, we also here have our dump load, so if those batteries ever reach their maximum charge, which is 13.7 um, volts, uh, and they've been close a couple times with some good winds this last summer, we got up to 13.4. So we've never actually dumped to that load, but what this would do is it would produce heat with that excess energy if the batteries are fully charged. So we'd be producing heat. Um, would it be possible to somehow have a... Um tank of fluid or maybe even coils in sand that you couldn't connect it to if it was more of a long term and use it as a thermal bank? You bet you can and I actually have, and I don't seem to have it here right now, I actually have a DC heating element for that very reason because uh, we were using this to heat water <laughs> and so uh, we heated a bucket of water with, uh, with it right off the load and didn't have any problem. So, um, this, the, these uh, uh, big resistors here. You can also fashion your own, you know, home heater. Just a little DC heater out of those. So you can run it in your house. So if the wind's blowing, you can heat your house directly with those things. So typically these big inverters, these are 600 watts each. So I can get 1200 watts of heat out of that. Around the side here, and I turn my inverter on, I've got my four 120 outlets. And you know, as long as you don't exceed uh, 1750 watts, you can pretty much run anything off of this unit. Uh, I'll just plug this light in and give you an example. But you can plug it right in and turn your light right on. Boom, you got light. Now, so. if it was 50 below, would those batteries still be supplying enough energy for that light? You bet. And uh, we've actually had this exposed to Fairbanks winters for two years now. This is the second year. Uh, last year, we maintained at the lowest it ever dropped was 11.9 volts. Uh, and we get just enough wind sporadically where that 3K charges that battery bank uh, really fast. So um, even in the middle of winter, we've had it up to, uh, you know, 13 or 14, uh, not 13 or 14, 12 or 13. 12 to 13 volts right in there, about 12 and a half, 12.7. Um, this year, um, we haven't had a lot of wind, and so it's a little drained right now. I checked it yesterday, it's a little cold today. My my um, my, my actual uh, screens for the charge controller have readings on them, but the problem is you can't really see it uh, when it's this cold. So. You were mentioning that you could take this on somewhat bumpy roads and such. Uh, what would you do with the mast? Would you leave it up as you traveled down the road? No, or? Okay. unless you wanted to create power. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I probably wouldn't want to do that. But this mast actually cranks down height-wise with that top crank, okay. and then the whole thing will bend and lay down here, so it just folds up into a nice little package. You can pull the blades and the turbine, it just slides right off. There's one bolt holding them, and you can see that bolt sticking out there. Um, pull that bolt out, and the whole thing just lifts right off. And uh, two guys to, to unload that big one, or one real strong guy. <laughs> I can carry the frame, but not the blades and the frame. So if I take the blades off, which is only about a three minute thing, it just unbolt them and they slide right off. You can also loosen the blade bolts and fold the blades up into a nice little package and lay them on a sled or something. So it's, uh, it all folds up really nice.